Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Pirate Biotechnology COVID-19 Pandemic Briefing. I'm going to be doing this for both applied chemistry and biotechnology, and I'm going to break it into several parts to make it uh, consumable. Just please realize that I myself just started learning about this last week and I'm doing my best to digest information and make it um, digestible for y'all. So bear with me. There may be some misinformation here, but I'm trying to check my sources, double check my sources. So here's the topics that we're going to cover. We're going to cover why is everybody freaking out? What even is going on? And that's what we're going to start to do today. In subsequent days, we're going to study what is coronavirus and we're going to study how that virus causes COVID-19 disease. And we're going to look at what medicines can help infected patients. And then finally, we're going to understand what a vaccine is, how it works, and how it's going to need to be produced. So part one, what's everybody freaking out about? Th that is to stay, say we're going to be studying epidemiology, which is the study of how diseases appear and pass through populations. Okay, so here's what everyone's freaking out about. Uh, can I move this? I can. So um, what we're seeing is an exponential increase in coronavirus cases. Uh, you can click right here. This is a live link. You can click that for the latest data, but this is accurate as of yesterday. It looks like there's over 6,000 cases. But what's important to realize is that these are just confirmed cases. So what that means is that these people were tested for coronavirus and it showed up positive. There's many people right now in the world, in the United States, in Los Osos, in Morro Bay, that have coronavirus, but they have not been tested. So this will not show those people. This is, shows the distribution of where in the United States um, the coronavirus is showing up the most. Again, this has to do with testing, so these are confirmed cases only. It started really bad here in Washington and then California, and then lately it's been exploding in New York. So epidemiologists consider a factor called R0. This is R0 right here, which is a measure of how infective a pathogen is. A pathogen is a disease-causing agent, and coronavirus is a disease-causing agent. So in order to study um, a pathogen's infectiveness, we look at something that's called R0, and here's how it works. Um, if we have an R0 of two, what that means is, is that a person that's infected, that's called patient zero, the first person that's infected, if the R0 is two, it means that that person will infect two individuals and that those individuals will go on to infect two individuals. If the if the R naught is four, like it was with SARS in two thousand two, then one person will infect four people. And of course, the higher the R naught is, then the more infective the pathogen is, and the faster it's going to spread through a community and population. So we're going to look at um, how diseases like this spread through a population. And we're going to use this simulator that was created by Washington Post. And again, this is a live link that you can click on here and it'll bring you to the simulation. So 
here we are with this exponential curve and we're trying to understand how that happens. So this first model here shows a sick person contacting a healthy person and then that healthy person becomes sick. And then once they're sick, everybody's sick and you can't get each other sick anymore. So that's not exactly how it works because in real life, people don't just stay sick, they recover. So here, is that sick person that recovered. So this person cannot go on to pass coronavirus to anybody else. So many of us will get coronavirus. And once that happens, we're kind of lucky because we can't pass it on to other people once we've recovered and knocked the virus completely out of our system. So we can look at a couple further models. So that shows patient zero interacting with other people and each contact is resulting in another infection. So here's the infected people over time. Here's the healthy people over time. And then once recovery stop, starts to happen, then the number of infected people decrease. And that's when the epidemic will run its course. you can stop so many people from getting sick it seems like by creating some sort of barrier or by uh isolating um sick populations like for example cordoning off an entire city and wuhan china tried to do that and this model shows what happened so here's an infected person and here is their barrier but you can see that a break opened up in the barrier here. And that's because barriers are never effective. You need to get food and medicine to these people. People are going to sort of escape the area. People are going to escape into the area. So in practice, um, isolation of entire communities has never worked. And it's thought that it will never work because if there's any place that could do it, it would be China and they didn't pull it off. So instead, what can be done is what's called social distancing. So you can see a lot of these people aren't moving and some of the people are. So the people that aren't moving have sort of um, distanced themselves from other people. And in this model, it looks like about... Um, 25% of the population is abiding by a shelter in place order. And you can see that that greatly reduces that spike in the population getting affected. If you increase that, so this is 75% of the population complying, then the spread happens even slower. So again, the purple are recovered people and they can't pass it on to anybody else. So you can see that that was way better, way less people got sick. So here is a summary of all those. This is a free for all with no social distancing, huge spike, everybody gets sick. Here, it looks like half the population ended up getting sick. Here, a third of the population ended up getting sick. And here, maybe 10% of the population ended up getting sick. So this is a model. It is overly simplified, um, but it helps us to understand how the spread of the virus can be reduced. So I think I'm going to stop there, actually, and pick up with this next time.